What's good, people? We're back at the Lions Den podcast, and today I'm hanging out with the prolific Mark Pavlich. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you? I'm great. Good, I'm good, great. Good, good. Uh, thank you for coming on the show, by the way. It's like uh, when I decided to do this, I was looking at who I would, I would, I'd love to have on it, who would be able to have a great conversation and a great flow, but also give something meaningful sure. that people can, can kind of digest and, 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 and find, you know, uh, use, use for, you know, yes, and that was you. Of course. You know, so I mean, uh, for those who don't know who Mark Pavlich is, you know, uh, like I was just talking to him earlier, I was like, this guy's the godfather of MMA, like... Like in, 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 in Canada and probably even part of the, 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 the MMA movement globally. You know what I mean? Like you were you were in it. You were like in the mix. You know, so I mean give us a bit of backstory about that, man. Like 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 yeah, let, let, let's hear it a little well, bit. I, I you know, people say that all the time, like they say you're the godfather for Canadian MMA and then yeah, there's yeah. people that say but you have to realize that I was around when no one else was around. Right. So there was the UFC and then there was me. Yep. And I was the defiant person in that relationship. So I was never trying to be like the UFC. Yeah. I wanted to be the MFC and I, and I was very, very clear on that. So I got in a lot of headaches with the UFC yep. because I didn't want to use black gloves. I wanted red gloves. I didn't yeah. want to be in a cage. I wanted to be in a ring. Yeah. And the funny part was, um, I think they finally realized that I was showing the utmost disrespect to them, which I, <laughs> which I, which I was, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, that's what always people that I think it's funny, like even in business, like all the time, people think like I, I never like I have friends. I have a circle of friends. Yep. But when I'm in business, I look at that like like when you fight, you're fighting across from someone. That's not your friend. No, that's he's, work, he's, man. He, he's trying to take your check. Yeah. He's he, the, people can, you know, sugarcoat it all they want. But it's like, no, I, I, I'm not your friend. And I want to I want to win all the time. Yeah. So. And what I found out in life is it's not so much I just want to win. I want to win at everything. Yep. You know, like if we start shooting cards against the, the wall, you know, like I would try to beat you, you know, yeah. like, and, and that's how it is. And I, I saw my father who was in the NHL and the Hockey Hall of Fame. He has the same mentality. My Uncle Marty, who won four Stanley Cups with Detroit Red Wings, yep. he has the same mentality. And then I look at my my wife, my son, everybody. We Everybody has the same mentality. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If everybody comes to my for a family dinner, we're playing charades at the end. Yeah. Everybody's trying trying to win yeah, you know what yeah. I mean like that's just the way it is and and I think once you lose that that's where you're gonna have a big problem in life I just yeah, yeah. I just think um that's where you will start you know I guess you're gonna be okay with mediocrity you know nah, I hate mediocrity yeah. man yeah. yeah fuck that shit and it's 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 probably one of the reasons why um I loved being in the MFC was uh I went from fighting like local level Correct. mediocre competition to actually getting tested and challenged. Correct. And now I had to find out what I was made of as a fighter, yes. you know? And to me, that was like a, a, a needed progression because it made me realize that you can't claim to be great if you don't fight great opposition, if you don't face great opposition. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people do that shit. But it's a, it's it's a, basically it is an epidemic right yeah. now, and every, and everywhere, not just in MMA fighting, but everywhere. Like I, I bump into people every day, and they're like they tell me about their business and whatever they're doing. Yeah. And they're really big for the section of the city they live in. Right. You know, they're yeah. not even they're not even big for the town we live yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like and then and then big. forget about. Forget about the province, forget about the country, forget yep. about North America. Yep. So my mind has always worked in that kind of level. Like when I started the MFC, immediately I said, I'm the biggest show in Canada. And people are like, this guy's crazy, man. What is he talking about? <laughs> and then I said, no, no, I am. I'm going to be the big... And, and I didn't say I was going to be the biggest show in Canada. Yeah. I said, I am the biggest you show are. in Canada. Yeah. I pound my chest. I tell everybody, I'm the biggest, I'm the biggest. And I would say it back to myself before I go to bed every day. And then all of a sudden, I was the biggest. Then when I was the biggest, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a TV deal. I'm going to get a TV deal. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, and the people are like, this guy's so full of shit. And I'm like, yeah, we'll see. And then boom, pound my chest some more. And I'm like, boom, Mark Cuban, fly to Edmonton. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was like, you know what? Double down. What am I going to do now? Oh, I want TSN. Oh, you're not going to get TSN. How yeah. are you going to get TSN? I'm like, I'm going to get TSN because... All I did was, I, my game is simple. I've never been overly intelligent, but what I've been is super perceptive. Yeah. So it's a, two different things, right? Yeah. So what I, what I would do all the time is I, tr I would leverage. I would celebrate for a quick second on the, always celebrate. Always. So, all, so I'd celebrate on the quick second. Oh, I got Mark Cuban. But what can Mark Cuban bring me next? Oh, now that I have Mark Cuban, 
I got TSN. Right, right, right. Then when I got TSN, I was like, okay, I'm going to double down again. I'm going to get the Fight Network. Yep. I want all three. I right. want, and I want checks from all three, right? Yep. So that's what people didn't understand. I was getting paid by everybody. Right. It wasn't, I wasn't doing this for free, giving my content away for free. Yep. I was being paid by TSN, by Mark Cuban, by the Fight Network. Everybody was giving me a check. So that was my, the game I was in. I was like, okay, what else can I do now? I need right. to leverage. Now, what do I do with all this? Oh, I need more sponsors. So I would say, well, you know, I'm on TSN. I'm with Mark Cuban. I'm with, and I would keep saying that over and over again, and just kept going and going right, and going. Right, right. You kept growing. Yeah. And then yeah. when you saw the ticket price, you were like, oh, how much is the tickets? Well, it was this much this show, and then this much this show. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, wow, you mean it's two hundred seventy-five dollars to sit in the front row of the MFC? Yeah, it was. And that's the facts. Yeah. So, so that's what people didn't understand. They were like, how did he? How did he do that? Right. Yeah. But my, my, it wasn't intelligence. It was like this perception hustle game. Yeah. You know, you you know when you're a kid, you had to hustle. You had to hustle to get anything. You got to move, man. Yeah, you want to go to the shake. You, yeah. you, want, you wanted to buy a nice cream cone on the corner, man. Uh, my dad didn't give me the money to buy it. Yeah. I had to hustle and do something or whatever it was to get that money yeah. to go buy it. Put, put something together. Yeah, to, I yeah. had no choice, right? Yeah. So it was the same thing with MFC. I took that experience as a, since I was a kid to, to go up and say that I did the same formula with MFC and now with my current business, the same mentality. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I think... Uh, I think a lot of people underrate using, leveraging what you have already. They always want something external, something they don't have yet. Or they don't want nothing. Yeah. That's what happens. It's, you have a flip to that. Yeah, you want it or this or nothing. They're content of like, oh, I'm right, I'm right here. Where they're at. Yeah, I, I'm right still. here and this is going to be great and we're going to just make this money and then all of a sudden client A or client B yeah, bounces. That avenue gets chopped I, I, off. Chop, now you're making half the money you were making. Now yep. what? Now what, right? Yeah, so you gotta step it up. So it, that, you know, I know some people they, they have a hard time with the word hustle, you know. But we that's a, you we use that term a you lot. You have to, man. But it, it is a you have to. it's a hustle it's game. It's a big time hustle. And what, what I like about it though, I I realize in life that a lot of people don't have that gift. No, it, they don't. And it's a gift. It's, it's it's a big time gift. But I find they have uh, access to it. They just don't hone it and train it. Correct. You know, and and I like that you used the uh, the word perception earlier because a lot of people don't practice their perception or intuition, you know, to go like, right. you know, uh, what should I do next? Like, I have this one big thing, what's next? And I like when you talk about saying you got Mark Cube and then TSN and then Fight Network, you know what I mean? Like, some people like just to be on HDNet, because I remember, yeah. people don't remember that HDNet Correct. was one of the first guys to broadcast in fucking HD. Correct. You know, ever. So, like, ever. Do you, know, do you know that even Bellator to this day on my TV yeah. is, is in like the grainy shit that you saw? Like, like, like <laughs> the it's, regular it's, TV. It's, it's not in HD, man. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, I can't even watch it. So yeah. I, I bought the zone because yeah. I'm like, I want to watch my NFL football. HD, yeah. And I'm like, well, finally, it's on HD because yeah. I had to buy this thing to watch fo NFL football. Yeah. But I'm like, I was on HDTV before anybody I was, was. Back in the day, yeah, man. That's yeah. right. That's you know, right. And, and and that's one of the things that, that that I find interesting is is people who claim to be in touch with and love MMA. Like when I talk about like my days in the MFC, you know, people like like and they go, MFC, where was that? I was like, dude, like, what kind of question is that for Correct. a Canadian? Correct. You know what I mean? Like MFC to me, like I remember, you know, getting in there was a big deal for me because even at the time, that was probably like the third or fourth biggest promotion in the world. world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you like like to be an MFC champion meant that you were going to the UFC it's guaranteed. 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 You know what I mean? Guaranteed. Because I mean, it meant you were one of the best in the world. They it wasn't just guaranteed. They hated people that won the MFC title. Antonio McKee. They, he was a great fighter. They hated him. Great fighter. UFC yeah. said they would never sign him. He fucking the, did the second he won yeah. the MFC title, yeah, they, did sign they him. signed him. I remember that. <laughs> it they was did like, sign him. It was yeah. crazy. And people used to yeah, say all they the did time. Sign him. And, and there was even times when I had guys like signed under multi-fight deals where I didn't let them go to the UFC. Yeah. But I always thought, even about your own personal career, you could have you could have went to the UFC easy. You know what you could have did? See, along the way, you're like, nah, I'm in the MFC and I'm going to... I used to think about that all the time. Yeah. You, 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 you fought in the MFC, you had the big fight against Adam Lynn, the walk-off, knock-off. You, know yeah. you know what you should have did? You should have left the MFC immediately. You should have went to a smaller show, right? No, and, and I'm saying in hindsight, right? Because yeah, this, yeah. this is what people do. Yeah. But you, you're not like that, right? Because no. your mentality was, oh, no. I got to go find... I got to fight the next guy. step it up, man. I used to say the same yeah. thing. Remember you got to step it you, up. You remember Dwayne Lewis? Yeah. Same yep. thing. Yep. Dwayne Lewis, he, 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 went yep. on a, he went on a roll. He, he knocks out um, Marvin Eastman. He knocks out uh, Mike Nichols from the UFC. He yep. knocks out this guy. Knocks out, he knocked out like three or four guys in a row. Like, yep. like, like, like slapped them. Yep. Should have left the MFC and went to a smaller show because he had so much hype. Yeah. 
knocked off one or two more wins, he would have went right to the UFC. Yep. The problem is in the MFC was the competition. It wasn't a, a feeder system for oh, the no, UFC. Dude. What happened was the yep. competition was so high that on any given day, the MFC top two or three guys could compete with any guys at the UFC at that time. Yeah, yeah. It was, so, a, it was a, a dude, what I liked about it was I got to have UFC level fights outside of the UFC. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. That, and, and I tell people that, and I was like, dude, like, Ryan Jim will pass through the uh, Paul Daly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 you know, uh, what's ben, his name? Ben Henderson. Ben Henderson <laughs> passed through the yeah, MFC. Yeah, yeah. You know, Douglas was, Lima. Lima, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, Diego and Douglas, yeah. Both of them. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? There was some huge, Ryan Ford. There was some yeah. huge MMA yeah. like names that stand out that passed through the MFC. And, and some of them didn't even make it out of the MFC. They yeah. may have lost in the MFC once or twice. You know what I mean? It, it, it's very interesting. I always felt sad about that part. I always felt sad about the guy, like yourself, uh, Dwayne Lewis, that easily could have been in the UFC and didn't because you stayed loyal to the cause, but you also stayed loyal to yourself. Yeah, so, so no one could ever say on the hindsight, because we know a lot of guys that went to the UFC from Ed, even from the city of Edmonton. There's a bunch of guys. That, yeah. that, that had a very poor career because yeah. they went there, but they kind of, they didn't, they didn't fight through the MFC. They kind of did an end around and then they got to the UFC and got exposed. Yeah, yeah. I find that's, that's the one thing I was wary of. Yeah. You know, I, I never wanted to to get to the actual pinnacle of what you're working towards. And then because you took the wrong uh, uh, detour or shortcut to be exposed. And because and, really, a lot of great things in life, you get one, maybe two chances at. Yep. And that's one of them, man. Like, the last thing I wanted to do was to get there and, and not be ready. So for me, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't look at it. Even in hindsight, I think I did the right thing in yes, hindsight yeah. because... You know, it, it, it showed me where my, my weaknesses were. And to be honest with you, uh, in hindsight, I realized that I was fighting UFC level guys, but I wasn't necessarily UFC ready because I started martial arts late. Late. You know, I started 23. And by the time I was ready to take it to the next level, I was getting close to 30. And when I That's lost right. my last fight in the MFC, I was 30, 31. And, That's right. and I looked at it and I was like, well, I can't really put together a career this way that would be long enough for me to make yeah. something out of it. It's probably time I took a step back and, and reassessed where I'm at and figured out how to do something I, else. And what am I gonna do with my life? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I gotta repackage it because I realized a lot of MMA guys have no exit strategy. No, it's, and it's not, listen, it's not MMA guys, it's not NFL. Most people. It's, it's NFL guys, it's NHL yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know a half dozen NHL guys that are retired from the NHL. Yeah. And in, 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 on a weekly basis, calling me on the phone, asking me about like, hey, you know, Mark, I'm starting this um, hot, small hockey stick line or some, <laughs> bull, something. some bullshit something. thing, right? Yeah, Where they yeah. think this is the next big thing. And I tell them, hey, bro, save your, save your money because that ain't it, right? Yeah. Like, that's just not it. And, and same with the NFL, too. I know guys that played in the NFL, and, ap- and they got all this money. But what happens when you got all this money, you got all this expense, too, right? So yep. you got, you got, you got, your house payment is no longer yeah, uh, just the lifestyle. A, it's not just a payment. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a small donation. You yeah, know? it's a lifestyle. So, the so, lifestyle catches up with you, man. Correct. Yeah, and that, that happens to a lot of people in professional yep. sports. And yep. it happens to people trying to amalgamate themselves outside of like their first crap. Like, when I started my business, I was never in the MMA business. I was in the entertainment business since I was out of high school. Right. You know, I was in I was in I was in high school making more money than my teachers. Because <laughs> no, no, it was true. You were just hustling no, it. No, you were, yeah, you had because, to move. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because my parents never gave us money when we were kids. Like yeah. they were like, You want money, go work. If you want this, go do this. Yeah. So so the best thing was I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? And I lived on the Detroit River in Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. And there was this big boat there and I saw this big boat and I walked up to the guy one day when I was in high school and I'm like, dude, how much is it to rent this boat? And he goes, what day of the week? I said, Friday night, man. He said, he said, how about give me 300 bucks? Yeah. I'm like 300 bucks. Now where do I get that 300 bucks, right? So I, I was like, okay, I went to the golf course, I sold a pops for a few weeks, you yep. know, and then I got the 300 bucks. I walked over to the boat guy, I gave him the $300. Then you know what I did? I went to high school and told everybody, hey man, I'm putting a dance on the boat. Now yeah, remember, like I'm, boat party. Now, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm 52 years old, man. This is yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what happened was, I put, I put, I said to everybody, it's five bucks to get on the boat. Yeah. No, no drinking, because you're in high school. Everybody, yeah. everybody bought their own booze. Yeah. And what happened? 500 kids showed up. Oh, there you, you do go, the math. Man. You yeah, do the yeah, math, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This is 35 yeah. years ago, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so boom. What do I got? I, I go, oh wow, I got 2,500 bucks. Oh, I got to give the boat guy 300 bucks. That means 2,200 for me. I got to give the DJ 100 bucks. Yeah. Okay. I got two grand left over. Yeah. By the time yeah. it's all said and done, the math and, added up. Yeah. Two grand at 
not even 17 years old. Yeah. I mean, I was in the cafeteria telling the teachers, hey, you need anything? Can I get you? <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, th yeah. Th this was going on and on and on. And yeah. I was like, okay. You learned the game early. Yeah. And so what do I yeah. do? So yeah, sure. I spent some of the two grand, but then I put some of it in my pocket. And then, oh, I was out of high school. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to start an entertainment business. Yep. And that, I started an entertainment business. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. I was like, this is fun. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. And then after the entertainment business, I was like, MMA. Yeah. And then that's what I did. I did yeah. that for, I, everything was like long periods of time. And then I started my marketing business and it's like, this is the last one. This is like the one I'm going to yeah. ride, ride out in the sunset with. But it was all le like leveraging one to the next. Is I wasn't, it really, Mark? You're going to do some other watching. Nah, what are you I, talking I about? Don't, I, don't, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see anything that excites me. You know, right. like I've, I've always been blessed to tell people that I've always did a business that like been fun. Yeah. Like it's no, I'm never doing stuff like, you know, like I'm on a roof pounding nails. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. like, and, and no disrespect to people doing that, but I'm saying oh, for it's, sure. But for I, sure. I, and you know what's funny? I say that, and I say that in one way, and I say it in another. But if I had a dollar for everybody, said, you know, man, I'm so scared of failure. You know, everybody's scared of failure. Yeah. And I knew what I was scared of right away. I was scared of success. Oh yeah. Because people, people all the time are like, oh, I'm so scared of failure, and I'm like. Failure. Yeah. What, what, who's scared of failure? I'm like, you know how hard it is to succeed, man? Oh, it, is hard, man. it is painful. painful it's blood. called sacrifice. Yeah. That's what you should be scared of when you wake yeah, up yeah. every day. Yeah. Stop telling people you're scared of failure, man. You're yeah. scared of success. Yeah. To, to be successful. You know what's funny? When I started getting successful with the MFC, it was, it was like, oh, whoa, man. This you got to keep it up, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, you that got to do better. That was scary. That yeah. wasn't failing. What didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. I was like, this is nuts. Oh my God, what am I going to do now? I'm in business with Mark Cuban. Yeah. Who? I didn't think that was going to happen, but, nope. that, but, I, but I did, but I didn't, right? Once it started to happen. Once it happened, right. Once he's standing in front of you and flies in and looking at you in the face. And then yep. when you're in the offices in TSN and you're standing there going, oh my God. Now in the marketing world, I'm sitting in corporate you know, right. offices with, real. with 20 people and they're saying, okay, we're going to hire you and we're going to pay you this much money. And I'm like, that's a lot of money. Yep. And then I'm like, and then I get nervous because I'm like, I got to deliver. No, I don't think, oh, deliver, I'm going to yeah. fail. I'm yeah. going to fail. I'm like, yeah. oh, if I don't deliver, then people are going to say I'm full of shit. And yeah. that, that I can't have. Well, that's the worst thing to have, So man. you could say you don't like me. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But you can't say I'm full of shit because whatever I say, I do. And, and, and I want to make sure that people understand that. So that's why I've always felt that way because I'm like, nah, if I'm going to say it because I'm going to tell myself that. And then I'm going to keep saying it. And I'm going to like almost brainwash myself into right. believing that. See, that's what's missing. It's... it's uh. I find a lot of people, and we're talking about this before we started this, uh, are faking the funk. Correct. You know what I mean? Which is they, a great term. Yeah, yeah. Great I love that term. we got to bring that shit back, man. Yeah. I'm going to start using it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I love it. Funk. I love it. A lot of people are faking the funk, and and it's it shows. Because now it's like uh, uh, you have business coaches, for example, who don't own a successful business. They have a number of people who they've convinced to pay them a monthly premium that they kind of showcase knowledge that they know but haven't really applied. Correct. You know, and they are a business coach. Then you have yeah. life coaches who are in their 20s and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm what sure life how, did you live? What life have you lived to be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so you've got a lot of people who are faking the funk and, and people are subscribing to it. And it looks like success, but it's really not, you know. So, so I like that, you know, you, 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 you've got a proven track record at something and you're able to take that, repackage it into something bigger and then evolve into something better. But ha but don't you notice that it seems like everybody in life now is trying to be somebody else? And then I yeah, and I tell people, true. I'm telling you, why are you trying to be like somebody else for? Look at everybody. Look at all the most famous people in the world. Yep. Divorced four times. Uh, <laughs> uh, 19 children, child payments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yeah, you, this shit's fucking nuts. You, you, you yeah. want that life? That's that's what you who you want to be like. Life. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I tell people all the time, man, like you want to be a star, be a star in your own life. And yeah. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be with my wife for 33 years. That's awesome. And I, and I tell people, I'm like, what's the secret, Mark? I'm like, you know, I've always treated her like my girlfriend. Right. And people are like, what do you mean? I go, I treat her like I never treat her like my wife. Right. I treat her like my girlfriend, you know, and, and because of that formula. We've been together all these years right. and very successfully because of that mentality. But it's not like most guys, I see how some dudes act in front of their, their girl and I'm, I, I don't say nothing. It's not my business. Right. Like I kind of look away and I'm like, well, that's going to end up in divorce court, you know, like, and, 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 yeah. and it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, the other thing is, is and it's, it's, it's a bit of a recurring theme. I, I find a lot of people uh, are they're getting in, uh, into those types of relationships a little too quickly without really doing the due diligence, you know what I mean? And yes. if it's anything that business has taught me, 
is you got to do your due diligence Correct. on some of this shit before you get into it, That's you right. know, because right. it's, you never know how things are going to turn. And you, you sometimes don't even know the kind of um, um, scenarios people are dealing with in their own life. Correct. And then you want to jump into that, you That's know, without right. understanding it. So I find people are getting into relationships too quickly and too early lately. You know, the world's changed. And we talked about we talked about a lot of times and with other things. It's changed so much that, you know, you can't get married in your 20s anymore. You know what I mean? You can get into a great relationship and start working towards Correct. something. But if you're 22 and getting married, like, to me, I'm saying, I'm looking at it like, man, it's... I remember who I was at 22, man. And I was... Correct. Fuck, I'm glad I wasn't married or had kids when I was 22 <laughs> because I was a jackass, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I... Fuck, I, 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 I'm glad I didn't put anybody through that shit. It's, it's the same thing I tell people on Instagram now. It's it, You're on Instagram. One week, you're, you got a bunch of pictures with this guy. Yeah. And then the next week, you have a new boyfriend. Yeah. And then the next week, three weeks later, you have yeah. another one. And so yeah. you're, and you're, 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 you're showing your happy life of, yeah, of yeah. all these yeah. different boyfriends. And, and, I, and I tell all the young girls and all the young guys out there, stop doing that. You're, yeah. make, you're making a fool of yourself. Yeah. You don't even realize it. But what, what I'm trying to get across to you is, it's like, once again, is most men have a hard time being alone. Most women have a hard time being alone with themselves. Yep. They don't know who they are. They've never asked themselves, oh, who am I? You know, like, yep. no, when I mean, when I tell people all the time, like, who are you? What I mean by that, I ask that to my friends sometimes. Dude, who are you? Yep. What do you believe in? Yep. What, what do you care about? Yep. Do you have any causes that you care about? No. Okay, well, maybe you should start that. Right. Um, do you have a faith belief, you know? Uh, no, I never thought about that. Like, what you do know? you stand for? Yeah, yeah. Like, what yeah, do you yeah. stand for? What do you but, stand but for? But if, if you don't physically ask yourself, you don't have to be around a crowd of people. You don't have to be around nobody. Yeah. No, ask yourself for real, man. It's a, it's a real thing. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, hey, am I a good person? Do I care about, do I, do I solely care about myself or do I actually care about other people? Right. Right? Do I have empathy for other people? Do I have compassion for other people? Right. I've been doing that my whole entire life. Like, I, I've always... You do that with your children, but you have to do that with other people as well. It can't just be with yourself all right, the time. Right, right. But it's, it's a tough thing to do, man. It and, is. And I can, I, I love being by myself, by the way. Fucking love that shit. But most people don't. And, and you're right, because... Big fear of that. Well, mm-hmm. by yourself, you can't lie to yourself, right? Correct. You can't, like, there's... Other people, for example, if we're having this conversation right now, if, if, if I wanted to impress you or if I wanted to be like, oh, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing there, but I could fudge it. I could lie. I could do this. Correct. But when it's you and, you know, you have to have that internal dialogue and say, well, dude, like, what, what do we stand for? Like, you can't lie to yourself. It's all right. like children. And like, like, yeah, you know the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I think ultimately it comes down to I, not wanting to be it's, a, it's the same thing if you were on doing a dating app. You yeah. know, and you put down who you are as a person and, you, and, and 90% of those people lie. Oh, and, then, and then I say to people, okay, do an honest one. So for me, I say, oh, Mark Pavlage, I don't like long walks on the beach ever. Um, <laughs> I don't want your dog sleeping in bed with me. Yeah. I don't want like, and, and people start to laugh, but I'm like, I know who I am. Yeah. So I'm like, that's this, the truth this, right this, there. This is the truth. Yeah. Now, do I say, I like long walks on the beach. I like, no, I don't no, want any of that stuff. I haven't walked on the beach in years, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. But that's, yeah. that's, that's to ask yourself. Like who you are as a person, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, I, like I said, there's lots of people that are scared, but they're not scared of failure, and they're scared to be alone. And this is what I've been finding out with lots of people. And I don't mean just millennial people. I mean Everybody, my, my age, yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah. up. Yeah, you know? yeah. So if, if if you could give like like one, you know, hardcore piece of advice to to, to anybody who watches or hears this, like, what well, what would it be? What would Mark Pavlish tell you to fucking do? I, I, I love my wife, I always said it, man. Like you, you have to get on top of that radar and you have to dance like nobody's watching. And I, I tell everybody, stop worrying about what everybody else thinks about you. You yeah. know, like if you're gonna sit around and worry about what everybody likes about you or cares about you, right. you're gonna go nowhere in life. And I got great advice for, for when I was very young and, and it said, you know, when I was poor and had no money, everybody loved me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I started to get successful and was on TV and all these other things. And all of a sudden I started hearing all these people didn't like me anymore. And I was like, Interesting, right? So I've always surrounded myself with a very small group of people that regardless if I fail or I succeed, they're always there for me. And that's what I recommend for everybody. Yeah, it's great advice, man. And and really I I I can I can kind of attest to that because I remember when I got into I used to be a Muay Thai fighter, right? When I got into MMA uh, everyone had like, you know, uh, like, like whenever you get into anything, sure. you get into entrepreneurship, everyone who is not an entrepreneur is like, oh, you better do. Everyone who was an MMA fighter and some who were, you know, somewhat okay MMA fighters started giving me advice. And, and I'll be honest with you, most of the advice was, oh, stay away from Mark Platovich and MFC, man. That guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know, and I, I was, to me, I was just like, I guess, you know, I didn't, I didn't know you any better, but 
honestly, my best years in MMA were with the MFC, right. you know, and, and once I got there, I realized why, why you were an asshole. It was because you didn't give anybody any fucking breaks. You know what I mean? Right. If you came to fight in the MFC. Unfortunately. Because, yeah. Because, you, you know, it yeah. was a fight. It, unfortunately, you know, it's funny, even with Ryan Ford, right? So I get along with today. But there was times that it was always like this. But because he got to a certain level where I couldn't pat it anymore. I couldn't give him the freebie. I couldn't give him that easy one. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it got to that point where it was like he had to fight the next guy. And that next guy was... Douglas Lima, and you know, your next guy was this, I couldn't do it, like, yeah, yeah. people, everybody was watching, they were like, I couldn't, I couldn't go, hey, Mukai, you can have this homeless man to fight next, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, Ryan Ford, you can have this guy, and you probably wouldn't have took it at that time, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't have taken it, and, but, and even, even, like, I think, I think, I think, uh, I think, I think uh, Ryan Ford's a great fighter, too, and, and he took those fights, and, and, and he did, yeah, yeah, and so, so, well, that's that's like a compliment, and I and I don't know what that comment's gonna do for anybody. But what I'm saying is, is that they actually, you guys actually did that. Oh yeah, there, 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 there's so many people in this city and in MMA in general. Oh, that, they duck fights. They they, they, they take duck, the easy fights. They, they, they sat sat there and said, "I'll fight anybody," but it, that's not true. No, 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 hundred percent, man. And, and you know, uh, ultimately at the end of the day, it's it's. Uh, I, I was glad to have spent my time in the MFC because. It, uh, it matured me a lot because I got to understand a lot of what real world experience looks like because local MMA doesn't give you like that global Correct. exposure, you know? And I mean, for me, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a, a prolific and unreal experience to have a guy like Pat Militich, for example, exactly. commentate on one of my fights and actually say, dude, like your Muay Thai is some of the best stuff I've seen like on the planet right now. You know what I mean? To me, it was like, holy shit, like, yeah, no, let's just have that, like, you know it's, what I mean? Because he's doing it every week. You know what I mean? Yeah, and he sees a lot of Lots. fucking martial yeah, arts, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So to me, like, just that experience was yep. was amazing, you know? And I got to win the Bazzi and I won a bunch of awards. You did. It was amazing, you know what I mean? So for me, it was like, it actually taught me the lesson that, yeah. you know, to get the good things in life, you gotta go do the hard shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes I look at all the guys so, who so avoided the hard shit. See, what you're confirming is, Success is painful. It's, oh, it's painful, and, dude. And, and that's scary. It's painful. That's dude. scary. Yeah. Not failure. Oh. Not failure. Oh yeah. Because you're like you're you're like you're like I can even see when you're talking about it now. You're still kind of got that. You're like oh you know like cause, oh dude it was yeah yeah because you're because that's what people understand. If you if you understand that yeah you'll never be broke. Oh you'll you'll never be like, broke if you have that mentality. Man. Yeah yeah yeah. And and I think that's that's a great way of looking at it to go if if you if you're okay with with because ultimately what I think is like when you decide what your mission is and you know what you stand for, Correct. all the other shit doesn't matter. You know what I mean? H hence why when I stopped doing the MFC after 16 years, yep. people are like, what do you mean you're going to stop? You just sold out your last show. You're signed with all these people. I'm like, nah. Yeah. I'm going to do this well, now. time to do something I'm going to do yeah, this yeah. now. You pick the like, mission. Are, and they're like, are you nuts? I go, no, I'm going to watch MMA when I watch MMA, but yeah. I'm not. People, people were like, they couldn't believe that I stopped. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, no, man. Like, my, my love is, is succeeding. Yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. I, I, like, I love MMA. I love boxing. I love combative sports. But I love, I mean, obsessively love succeeding. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. that trumps Everything, Everything else. else. Nothing else. Like MMA is not even close to how much I love succeeding. Right, right. So, so if you said, Mark, we're gonna do, we're gonna sell bathtubs, man, and we're gonna sell them, and we're gonna make them look really shiny, and they're yep. all gonna be chrome and black, black chrome, uh, you know, gold chrome, but we're gonna sell them, and we sell four million units of bathtubs. You want to see how happy I'm going to be? You want to <laughs> see how excited <laughs> I'm going to be about yeah, being yeah, in the yeah. bathtub business? Be fired up. And what I found out in life was, it didn't matter if it was MMA the marketing business, yep. entertainment. When I used to get excited about something, I found out that I can make other people excited about it just as much as I was. Yeah, yeah, and that's great, man. And, 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 and it shows because, I mean, your show was one of the best shows in the world. Uh, and, yeah, and your marketing uh, uh, you know, uh, asset is doing great. Like the Mark Consultant is doing big things. I've seen, I'm, I'm seeing you guys all over the place and, and that's great, man. And, you know, and sometimes I, 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 and that's why I say, like, sometimes I look at you as, as a guy who, like, I, I try to emulate sometimes because you were able to successfully move from one side right. to the other, yeah. and you're still doing big things, man. The same formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's the same formula. That's dope, just, man. Just, just, it's the same formula, just a different genre of stuff to do. Nice. Now, if people want to get at you, like, where, where can they find some of your stuff and, 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 and you'll get the, the Mark Pavlich dose? Well, I, like I tell everybody, it's easy because it's my name. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, at Mark Pavlich on everything, and I mean yeah. everything, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, and then the markconsulting.com, and that's it, you know, like, and I, and I, 
I find some way to keep motivating myself nice. to take it up the next level. I love it, brother. The markconsulting.com. Check it out. Mark Pavlich, the man. I love it. Godfather of MMA in Canada. You're the man, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know. <laughs>